Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ad America. My name is Anton. I'm one of the e-guides here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me or the other e-guides outside of the performance area. Ad America is an American center here in Jakarta where we share information about the United States through our events. Here are some of our upcoming events. On Saturday, January 25th, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., we are going to host a presentation called Temusapa. In this presentation, and this presentation is going to um, be a platform for those who are differently abled and those who are able to share and communicate in the same platform. So for those of you who are interested, you can come to Ad America this Saturday, January 25th, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Here at Ad America, we also have a free service. It's called Education USA. If you would like to pursue higher education to the United States, you can come to here to Ad America and meet with our Education USA advisors to plan your study to the United States. We're open every day from Monday to Sunday from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m., except on Saturdays, we're open earlier from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. These are the highlights of our past events. We've been here since December 2010. We've held so many events and we're going to hold so many more. If you would not like to miss information on our upcoming events, you can become a member by going to our website, www.adamerica.org.id, click register, enter your name and email address, and then you'll officially become our member, which means that you'll be getting newsletter once every week containing information about our upcoming events. Ad America is also on social media. We have a Facebook account, a Twitter account, an Instagram account, and we also have a YouTube channel. For those of you who still tweet, you can mention us at Ad America and use the hashtag Ad America, and your tweets will be shown on our live tweet wall on your right side. To start tonight's event, I would like to invite Scott Hartman for the opening remarks. Um, good evening. I'm, my name is Scott. Uh, as he mentioned, I'm the Acting at America director. And uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you here tonight. Um, we have a, a two very talented performers, um, Indonesian alumni of the Eastman School of Music, one of our most renowned music schools in the United States. And we're also delighted to have the presence of Mr. Ambassador and Mei Cho here tonight with us as well. Um, tonight, they'll be performing a selection of American songs. And we also have time for questions. So please save your questions until the first part of the performance is over. And without further ado, I will pass it back over and we will begin. So thank you once again, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Pat Scott Hartman, for the opening remarks. And now, without further ado, let's give a round of applause for our performers tonight, Edith and Pharrell. Thou 
canst not pierce her heart, for now left and forlorn, my sighs and tears, my heart, then are thy shaft to tempt while she, while she for triumph loves, my sighs and tears, my heart, then are thy shaft to tempt while she. Why she fought triumph loved Fine necks for ladies, cheap choice brave and new, good penny words, but money cannot move. I keep a fair, but for a fair to view, a better baby. Be to crash, the heart is true, the heart is true, the heart is true. Great gifts are vials, and we look for gifts again. My trifles come as treasures from my mind. It is a precious jewel to be plain. Sometimes you shall the audience grow be fine. Father, take a shift of me again, of me again, of me again. Within these back pins, points, laces, and gloves, and divers toys feet in the country fair. But in my heart, where duty serves and loves, turtles and tweets, cuts through the heavenly fair. Heavy the heart that thinks of no removes, of no removes, of no removes. Hello. Good evening and welcome to tonight's recital. Edith Pudayani and I, Parel Silaban, are very happy to see you all. And these previous songs we just present to you, we want to make it as a point of departure of what is an American art song. And it's kind of like quite remotely to what happening to, to the present. For instance, Usually, those songs happen in a Renaissance fair with a bard with a lute and trying to perform and entertain people. But however, tonight it's kind of different settings. We are in this in futuristic hall, thanks to the American Embassy and At America. And we were accompanied with this beautiful instrument provided by the grand piano signatures. So, the next songs is going to be. The, pre the present of our American art songs. We choose Ben Moore as a living composer, and we're trying to portray what, what is the, the exact American art song nowadays that's been usually performed, usually being discussed in the academic area and everything. So what is special with Ben Moore, if I can borrow Edith's quote, it's quite popsy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and yeah, the thing is, is that we, with, with, with classical songs, it's just most of the time people think of classical songs as very, very serious, right? It's just like everybody has to be like, it, it's, it, it takes like a lot of brain power to like listen to it. But we're not going to go that far <laughs> today. It's just like, this is actually very, very um, light. Um, yes. But it actually has a very cool story about, you have a cool story about yes. the poet. From those six songs that we're gonna perform, it was a poem come from three poets. Uh, one of them is jo James Joyce, Elizabeth Bishop, and William Butler Yeats. Those are one of the very popular poets. And those are poets have th different characters, like James Joyce usually romanticizing the poems, and William Butler Yeats usually used metaphorical side in, in within his poems. And we take one song of Elizabeth that 
written, the, po the poem itself written by Elizabeth Bishop, because we want to bring you a musical experience of how humanity usually appreciate the music itself. And if you're interested in to the musical explanation, I would let our doctor herself explain oh everything. <laughs> <laughs> Please eat it. <laughs> so, um, Pharrell just told you about the poets and the type of languages that they use, um, but Ben Moore himself is actually very um, contemporary, I guess, if, if that's the right word. Contemporary in his way of portraying these things. Um, what is very, very interesting about these songs is that you would see something that is very, very um, characteristic of him. So it's just like, it's very poppy in some ways, but then you still have to present it in a classical way. So it still has a lot of technique for him, for me. Um, but at the same time, it's, like it's something that is more easily relatable, I guess, to people. Whether or not you're into classical music or you're not into classical music, I think um, Ben Moore's songs um, can be appreciated either way. Also, if you haven't noticed, we have the text on the other side. This is the benefit of performing here, <laughs> clearly. And then so, it's, it's, so in, not only that you can hear him sing it, but then you can also read it, read it. and then like, think about what the poems actually mean um, for you. So we hope you enjoyed the songs. Of some 
seenest the rands will divers treasures keep. I lay those treasures I possessed at that mine eyes and learn to reap. Shall we not be as wise as the Sweet bosom, be oh sweet it is and fair it is. When no rude wind might visit me because of sad austerity. Lost hands by 
by the shore where I stand on a roadway on a pavement square I hear it in the deep heart So, before we move on to another interesting part, uh, for this art song art form, we want to close it with this very popular folk song. It's really popular as a children's song as well. So, um, it's called I Bought Me a Cat. Does anybody know that song? <laughs> yeah? yeah? Okay, good, perfect. Um, so it's actually arranged by Aaron Copeland. Okay. Um, which is a very like quintessential um, American composer in the 20th century. And then he takes a lot of the folk idea um, of American like tradition and then make it into something that is more classical in its presentation. So we have a few surprises for you guys for this. So yes. just be ready. Just be ready for <laughs> it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy. I bought me a cat, my cat pissed me, I fed my cat on the yonder tree. My cat says me the life be. I bought me a duck, my duck pissed me, I fed my duck on the yonder tree. My duck says, my cat says me the life be. I bought me a goose, my goose pissed me, I fed my goose on the yonder tree. My goose says, my duck says, my cat says, feed a life I bought me a hen, my hand pissed me. I fed my hand on the yonder tree. My hand says, my goose says, my dog says, my cat says, feed a life I bought me a pig, my pig pissed me. I fed my pig on the yonder tree. My pig says, my hand says, my goose says, my dog says, my cat says, feed a life I bought me a cow, my cow pissed me. I fed my cow on the yonder tree. My cow says, my pig say, my hand say, my goose say, my dog says, my cat says, feed a life I bought me a horse, my horse pissed me. I fed my horse on the yonder tree. My horse says, my cow says, my pig says, my hand says, my goose says, my dog says, my cat says, feed a life I bought me a wife, my wife pleased me. I fed my wife on the yonder tree. My wife says, my horse says, my cow says, my pig says, my hand says, my goose says, my dog says, my cat says, feed a life Thank you so much to the zoo. This is fun. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Really, it, it really, it really makes it, it. It really makes a difference when you actually have the zoo in the audience. So, <laughs> thank you so much, guys. That was fun. Um, so, for the next part of our um, recital, we were thinking that it's like okay. So we got the quote-unquote serious 
stuff in the beginning. So it's the ones that like in the very classical tradition, um, it's usually performed yeah. in a concert hall, but then now we're moving into who here likes Broadway musicals? Hey. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's like, I was expecting like, yeah! <laughs> Yeah. Thank you! <laughs> so we're going to be presenting six um, musical, six musical numbers, right? Oh, see, like, this is why he should have just told you guys about the song, so. Okay, sorry for that. So the first two songs, the first, yeah, uh, it's going to be from the opera platform. Uh, the first is Lonely House from Street Scenes, composed by <coughs> Kurt Weill. So the whole story is all about uh, neighborhood in the east side Manhattan. And it is tragic, but also romantic. So I'm pl in, in this aria, I'm playing as, a Sam, as, as Sam Kaplan. So the, the title itself is Lonely House, and I'm trying to portray how lonely is the house is. However, Throughout the melody, it contains quite mystical, quite, yeah, loneliness and everything. You can guess after that. And then the second song is New York Lights from A Few from the Breach by William Balcom. And it's a story about an Italian family uh, living in New York. And it's also a tragic and romantic story as well. And then I'm playing as Rodolfo. I was, I'm the one with undocumented immigrant here. However, I found my love in New York City. And this song is when I just arrived at New York and enjoying the New York lights. seems to breathe a sigh. Sometimes I hear a neighbor snowing. Sometimes I hear a baby cry. Sometimes I hear a staircase clicking. Sometimes a distant telephone.
the beauty of the few at home. The palazzos of Palermo, the cathedral dome, as in pictures of Milano and of Rome. But they don't compare to the New York night. I love our oranges, white of the tree. Then there is one more, we can say it's a musical theater. It was composed by the, the great Leonard Bernstein and the lyricist was Stephen Sondheim. You, you probably know the song. The foundation of the story came from the Shakespearean Romeo and Juliet between Capulet and the Montauk family. And in here, it's between the jet and the Sharks Gangster. And I'm here, Tony, wandering around the downtown streets, trying to serenade. So Maria will come over to me. This is Maria from West Side Story. Most beautiful son I ever heard. Maria, 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 Maria. All the beautiful sound in the world in a single word. Maria, 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 Maria. Maria, 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 I've just met a girl named Maria, and suddenly that name will never be the same to me. Maria, I've just kissed a girl named Maria, and suddenly I found how wonderful the sun can be. Like rain, 
Excuse me. <laughs> so we have um, three more, but the way that we we're going to perform is that we're going to perform two, and then we have like one last piece. But the two, the next two, it's actually um, it's kind of interesting because we are kind of juxtaposing things that you might not know and the <laughs> things that you might very already know. <laughs> so the first one is um, "Love to Me." which is um, composed by, it's very, very new, right? I think Adam Eastman actually yes, it premiered it um, as uh, one of the operas um, a couple of years ago. The composer name is by Adam Guerrero? Yes. And then we actually have the residency um, um, by Adam actually at Eastman when we were preparing for that opera. Year, so yes. we thought that it was appropriate for us <laughs> to include that here, considering that both of us are from Eastman. But the second to last song is? probably popular from Aladdin. Uh, you probably know the, the song. And then the last song, I will tell you the story later. <laughs> Thank you. 
the next song. Come from a boy who doesn't know, who still doesn't know her unnamed mother, but he's trying to make a better life, try to make a better living through his promise and act. So our last song? Okay. Yes. The story of this song, I mean, the musical theater, the story of the musical theater come from originally from Hungary. So the story is a love story again, but this time is in the perfumery store. So the love story happening between the employers, the employee and crossover and so on. So <laughs> I'm, I'm playing as Georg. I have a secret pen pal. And suddenly we met each other, but the first meeting is quite, I don't know, it's, we are classing each other. Th however, after that first attempt, we kind of find out that we are loving each other. So this is, she loves me from the musical theater. She loves me as well. I love 
Good evening, everyone. Could we give one more round of applause to Edith and Farrell? All right. Before we actually start the Q&A session, uh, my name is Misal Tambun. I'll be the moderator for tonight's event. Uh, we would like to acknowledge for uh, our U.S. ambassadors uh, today, Mr. Joseph Donovan and Mrs. Mei Chow. Would you say hi and give a round of applause to them? Thank you so much for coming to this beautiful event. So um, we're starting our Q&A sessions, maybe from uh, the audiences, if you do have some questions towards the performances or towards the performance itself, then we could open that question, maybe one or two questions to start. If not, then I'll start. <laughs> Anyone from right here and right there? Then I'll start. <laughs> so probably just like very general questions. Uh, probably we, you know, like in Indonesia, tidak kenal maka tak sayang, right? So we need to know like who are they, right? First, at first, right? So maybe you could uh, tell us about uh, just a little bit briefly about yourself, uh, how you guys like met each other. Like, is this your first or second or even like multiple performances together? They would like to hear that. Um, so hi everyone. My name is Edith. Thank you. Um, so I've been studying music since I was like really, really little, so I never actually had a memory of myself where I'm not playing the piano. <laughs> Thanks to my mom over there. I just, I, she's <laughs> but um, so I did most of my studies in the States. Um, I did my undergrad in Texas Christian University in Fort Worth, Texas, and then I did my master's and my doctorate at Eastman School of Music. Um, I focus on piano performance, um, but I also have a double minor in music theory and also collaborative because I find it more fun to perform with other people than by myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Parel Silaban. So Silaban is the family name of Bataknis tribe in here. <laughs> so 
there are my parents there who just come from North Sumatra directly. <laughs> so I'm quite different. I have, I have quite a different story with Edith. I started as a Bachelor of Economics from University of Indonesia. He's the, he's so the smart one. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the full wheel of regrets one. <laughs> so, but suddenly there was a chance, so I, I took this opportunity to audition at Eastman, and I got it. And then I just finished it last May, and now try to contribute to this country, whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> awesome, awesome, wow, fantastic. So we got two performers from uh, the U.S. Who, are, who were born in Indonesia, right? You guys were born in, in Indonesia? Yeah. Correct. So I'm just like curious about like how do you guys build such chemistry like on the stage, right? We feel like we feel like you guys been performing together beforehand. And is there any like specific maybe like subjects that you actually studied back in the U.S. until you actually can give us like some goosebumps, right? Did you guys feel that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, this is the first time that we perform together. First time. First time. Not bad for a first time, right? <laughs> Exceptional. Uh, so when I was I was at Eastman for six years, and then so we overlap my last year at Eastman. So at that time, um, because I've been at Eastman for quite some time, so I was already assigned to another singer. So it's it's usually um, they pair us up like the pianist and a singer, so then we can work together. Um, so I already have another singer, and he just got in, so he got another pianist. But because now both of us are in Indonesia, and then so we figured this is like. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. So probably this is the time for us to hear questions from the audiences. Anyone? Oh, also, it just comes with a lot of practice, by the way. Just like <laughs> for those who are musicians or non-musicians, yeah, maybe we're, if we're you have musicians, you guys have a question. Maybe like how many hours practice, like oh you know, per day, like to make a beautiful music like that. Just a very simple question. You know, do, All right, I have okay. a quick question. Over, over here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> hi, I'm, hi. Hi, I'm Agnes, also from UI. Yes, UI. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was wondering that you have a, such a wide range of uh, song repertoires that you uh, perform tonight. So on, on what base that you choose those kind of songs? I follow Boy. the singer. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, our foundation, our idea, foundation of idea right now is we're still in the, the phase of introductory about classical music. So I give this idea how about to bring everything from the point of departure, like the Renaissance music, the present art songs, American art songs, and snippets of opera, snippets of musical theater. So from this phase, actually, we can start to continue to anything, any, any other themes like, like that. So yeah, that kind of the point of idea. Yeah, I think, and then also um, on top of it, it's just like we like to do things that not a lot of people have done. That's because like, you don't want to be going to a concert and it's like, oh, I've heard that, oh, I've heard that. Oh, I've heard that. Oh, I've heard that. And just like, it's not very, uh, we wanted to have something that is, of course, it has to be beautiful. And of course, it has to be entertaining. I mean, that's, that's the point of us going like t for this experience. But at the same time, it's like we want it to be somewhat educational. So like, you guys probably don't know Ben Moore before, but now you've heard Ben Moore. And maybe you want to like YouTube him later on and see other singers who sing his songs. Like, that's what we want to do. I think it's just like trying to make classical music more accessible towards the public, especially in Indo where, I mean, we have a lot of classical music concerts, but I don't think that it's even like in this venue, like you don't think about classical music performances in a mall, <laughs> right? <laughs> but now it's here, exactly. So invite us more often, that's the point. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you nice. so much, thank you. So, you got a question? I have uh, two questions that I, I think will be, you can answer quickly, so I'll, I'll ask them one at a time. The first one is, how many Indonesian artists are at Eastman now? 
zero. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I think we'll we... try to get more there. Yeah, please do. <laughs> my, my second question is, where did you find the animals, and was it difficult to train them? <laughs> Very, very good question, sir. <laughs> Please answer yeah. that question. Because th they deserve a, a round of applause. Yes. <laughs> Maybe to wrap up the, the, the question, um, or like to add more to the question, like, did you guys like sign them beforehand? Maybe we are curious about that, right? Like, do you guys like, you know, like have like a, you know, like tech talk di luar, yeah. right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, most of them are our friends. Actually, we already met in several occasions back past in the past, and most of them are singers as well. If you want to visit uh, some of their occasion, w the the youngest one was is part of the the Resonance Children Choir. If you ever heard of Mana them, Greta. and then the and all of them besides the youngest are part of the Batavia Madrigal Singers. So they're really good. <laughs> you should go to their concerts if they you haven't you been. Should go. They're actually really good. <laughs> All right, any more questions? We get maybe like two more questions. Any hands? Uh, one over here, one over there. This is we can Thomas. give the microphones. Maybe, yeah. Can we hear like two uh, questions uh, from? You guys, or like one question each, and one then like we will each, answer. Each, each, each. One, 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 one. Yes. Yes. For real, for real, Yes. All right. My question here is, you're from the School of Economics, and uh, you're full time, full -time um, music background, I guess. What What do you envision of your of your career over here in Indonesia as musician? I mean, it's it's a little bit tough for, but of course we have creative. Uh, ministry right now, but what, what would you expect with your career? Yeah, I think. Oh. Could we hold that Music. and then hear the second one so that we can answer immediately after? Hi, Miss Eli and Joe. I'm actually proud because uh, one of them is Bataknis and I'm Bataknis as well. <laughs> and it's great, right? Um, this is um, like an uh, expectation or it's for hope for the future. Um, Jonathan, I would like to say, uh, how is it possible if you can do that, it's much better and you can make it actually to go international and introduce our North Sumatra and Bataknis in front of the world. Thank you. Please do. <laughs> I th for the first question, I think it's quite unique. Maybe in my generation, uh, we are facing a lot of, I mean, we got so much opportunity to do something. And then when I was in the University of Indonesia, where mostly I only studied about economics, I can say half of my times at the university, I'm, I did sing with the choir. So uh, I think it's a chance for me to do more, to do more with those two skills, economics and singing, I hope. Uh, I mean, we need baby step. <laughs> My innovation, not much. I, I think music education needs to be better. And we always talk about that. And we are very, very uh, believe that it could be better here in the future. So I think from that baby step, maybe we, the appreciation to not just classical music, but what is music, what is art, and so on could be better. So, yeah. Um, for me, um, I believe in music education and I believe that music should be accessible for everyone. Um, and the reason why um, is because I feel like music humanizes us as human beings. Um, I feel like it's one of those experiences that can like really enrich your soul. And it's not just like, oh, I'm happy, and then that's it. It's just like, no, it's it actually something that you carry with you. But at the same time, it's just like, I feel um, having a basically pretty much a thorough um, music musical background, I didn't even finish high school, um, and then just go straight to music school. But, <laughs> so no like fancy economics degree. Um, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but, but, but in a lot of ways, it's like, I feel like 
through music, you learn so much more, um, so much to being a human. So it's just like, for example, like for music, you learn how to persevere. You learn not to give up really easily because like you don't play piano and like be really good at in like a month. Like that doesn't happen. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't happen. I know from experience <laughs> it doesn't happen. But it's, it's, it, it, it builds character and it builds... Um, good um, personalities, I think, from people. You learn how to be social with people because you work with other people. You learn how to be open-minded with other people's opinions. Um, and I think this type of soft skills, or problem solving, um, so it's this idea of soft skills, I feel like, is very transferable regardless of whether or not you're actually gonna be a musician, a professional musician or not. It's just like, it's something that you carry with you um, throughout your life. So um, for me, when I was young, I had such, uh, I don't wanna say difficult, but maybe more of, I mean, internet is also not how it was when I was prepping for school. But um, I, didn't, I didn't feel like I have somebody that knows how to get me there, like to the good schools, to the get scholarships, to like good teachers. And then so I feel like if people like us, like the ones that has um, gained this experience abroad, are not coming back home and like helping out our, the next generation of musicians, then as Uncle Joe said, it's just like, it's gonna be like zero still at Eastman forever if I stay in the States or if we stayed in the States. So um, my idea of coming back here is to nurture the next generation and I hope that they can even be better than what I have accomplished. Very beautiful visions to everyone. Thank you. Any other question? We have Wait, you haven't answered that one. one. We have an answer. The one is very specific. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> About bringing Batak Batakni's heritage Batak. to the international? Yes. We'll I'm do it in our next concert. Please yes. come. <laughs> <laughs> The doctor here always have a good answer, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this platform enable us to, to show everything. I mean, it's not just, as a bad technician, I can sing an American art songs. Maybe sometimes in the stage, there is, I can show some our, of our folk song and everything. I mean, in the future, I guess, I'm planning to, but we'll try to work on that. <laughs> I, I, I will always try to uh, say that, uh, what is it, uh, take a pride of your own uh, heritage. Yeah, that's one of the key to be true to yourself, I guess, yes. Right. Uh, actually, to add to uh, that answer, actually, I've been witnessing to some uh, traditional music of Indonesia has been performed actually all over the world. Um, Eastman yeah. has a gamelan ensemble. Can yeah. you believe that? Yes. Seriously. They perform every spring semester. Yeah, even like every single Independence Day outside uh, Indonesia, we actually uh, promote the Indonesian music out there, but like the very, very big one. So if you go to Washington DC, we got like a very, uh, like a very big cultural events over there. Then you can see like how not only uh, Batak uh, cultures over there, but like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's specific, specifically, but like you can see like every single uh, region of Indonesia's culture was being performed over there. So it's very, very beautiful and amazing over there. Yeah. Any, uh, probably one more question. One more, one more chance <laughs> to ask question. One over here on my left. Uh, I've always been curious uh, for professional singers. What do you do when you wake up in the morning? You know there's a concert at night and you have a sore throat. You lost your voice. What do you do? <laughs> have you recorded your voice beforehand? Just in case. Or maybe to have a specific insurance of your <laughs> voice. <laughs> yeah. We are different. We have a different world, uh, actually, <laughs> between Edith and I. When <laughs> I couldn't, Could you explain? <laughs> so I couldn't exercise like twenty. Like, do do you exercise twenty hours a day? <laughs> what? I heard. I heard ten, ten, ten hours a day. I used to. Not yes. anymore. So every no, not exercise. Practice, practice. I don't exercise, guys. Like, no workout. Like it's this type of exercise. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Uh, so practice aside, I mean, this performing I, in, in the backstage, I didn't sing much. I just write to the text and try to speak it like a Shakespearean style. Uh, so you can believe what you say. I think that's the key to performing. And about the voice itself, I mean, you just need to practice. <laughs> but no more than 10 hours. It will. <laughs> <laughs> so it will be nine hours, right? Oh, nine hours and 59 minutes. Nine hours and 59 59 minutes. 59 minutes. 55 minutes. How yeah. about for 33? <laughs> Yes, yes the musical jokes, if you guys know what that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very sp singer-specific question. Um, but I, I, d I don't know. It's just like, I think for me, practice is always... Um, I think everybody needs to practice, of course. But practicing doesn't always mean that you have to be in front of the piano or you have to be singing. I think a lot of the times it's just like the creative process actually happens when you're not making any sound. Um, so, like thinking about what you want to do, or like envisioning what type of sound you might want, like designing what your end result, I guess, is going to be. I think that's more important than actually like slaving on the piano. Um, although I was stupid and I did slave at the piano. <laughs> <laughs> but that was way back when. I'm smarter now. <laughs> we learn from mistakes, right? <laughs> All right, so um, do you think this is going to be like the end of everything or you guys want to hear the encore? Don't tell them there's an encore. No, I'm just like asking. I'm not telling them. I'm, that's the difference between asking and telling, right? Sure. So. <laughs> do we need to hear one more? Yes? One or two? All right, let's enjoy Farrell and eat it for one more time. Fill my heart as another 
longer than springtime am I, gayer than laughter am I, angel and lover. Thank you. Can we please give another round of applause for our performers, Edith and Pharrell? And before we close tonight's event, I would like to invite Ambassador Donovan and Ibu Mecho to hand out to hand to hand tokens tokens of appreciation to our performers tonight. to take pictures with our Ad America logo. like to thank everyone for coming tonight when we hope and we hope to see you again at the next Ad America event. Good night everyone.